Boeing. It's a legacy company in the aviation industry, without which the aviation industry largely would not exist. For such an impressive and long-lasting company, last year has been the year of ultimate crisis for Boeing. Following two fatal crashes of the Boeing 737 MAX, the company had to write down over $8 billion in revenue lost because there were deliveries that they were planning to make of their aircraft that they weren't able to make. But probably even more importantly than that, while that was a shock to Boeing's system last year, has been the shock to the overall airline industry this year. With airline organizations parking planes for months at a time and planning for reductions in their overall aircraft fleet, the need for new Boeings will be significantly diminished in the next number of years. But Boeing has a unique challenge. We're gonna look today at their cost structure and at their revenue drivers. We're gonna look at their lines of business to understand what all of the pieces of the business are. And we're gonna look at where their profit comes from so that we can understand how Boeing can and should be adjusting in these times of crises. I'm Jenny Ray LaRue, the Managing Director of Management Consulted. I'm an ex bain consultant, and one of my favorite hobbies is weekend warrioring, specifically focused on analyzing companies and industries. It's a weird way to wake up in the morning, but it's definitely something that I love to do, and so I'm excited to have you join me today. I'm looking at the Boeing 2019 financial report, their 10K, and I'm on page 56 of the financial report. This is one of the first places where I like to start, which is just in their consolidated financial statements, usually the statement of income, or in this case, Boeing calls it the summary of business segment data. I find this to be completely enlightening because it breaks down the revenues, the loss and earnings from operations, which is a little bit more than just the uh, direct variable costs of the business. It actually breaks it down even more, so that's quite helpful. And then when we look at the segment operating loss and profit and the total loss from operations, when we take those all in aggregate, you can kind of get a big picture of the business. So one of the things that you see here on this page, on page 56, is that they have four core areas of the business, and we'll just report them in order of revenue. So commercial airplanes. Now, if you look back into 2017 and 2018, you can get really more appropriately the relative size of those businesses. Those businesses accounted for more than 50% of Boeing's total revenue in those years. And that's really important because wherever the revenue is coming from, that's going to be a big focus area of the business. So these have clearly been very important segments in the business. However, you'll notice that there are three other segments, segments that don't align directly with the commercial airplane segment of the business and that are incredibly important to the bottom line as well. Defense, space, and security, which is where for which the um, Boeing company has its largest client in the US government, went from 24 billion in revenue in 2017 to 26.2 in 2019. And although that was not a significant difference in terms of the total revenue, it was actually a fairly decent growth rate for that segment of the business. In addition, in global services, you have uh, going from 14.6 billion up to 18.5 billion. So a decent growth rate there, even faster than in the defense space and security. So uh, while we see that in 2019, we had this major revenue decrease from 57, um, almost 58 billion, if we round up in 2018 to 32 billion in 2019, which is just a massive shortfall uh, from what they, they certainly had expected and, and uh, hoped for. We also see these other segments of the business that are increasingly growing. However, because of the importance of commercial airplanes in the business, you see that we had a positive profit, about half the profit contributed from commercial airplanes in 2017, um, more than half in 2018, and then a major loss in 2019. What does this point to? Well, first of all, the business of Boeing is a massive variable cost business. So commercial airplanes, defense, space, and security, even though they have significant costs that are focused on R&D, more of the costs go into actually manufacturing. So sourcing and manufacturing airplanes and defense and security systems. And in a year where you have a major shock to demand, such as after the grounding of the 737 MAX and the decrease in orders and deliveries for the 737 MAX, you have an even bigger problem, which is that you have a very 
long runway inside a variable cost business. Many variable cost businesses like luxury goods are able to very quickly adjust pricing. They can discount pricing or change the pricing of their materials and to adjust sourcing. It's an under one year prospect for them. For Boeing, not anywhere near that. Some of their airplanes take up to 10 or more years to design, develop, and roll out the initial planes. And so that loss in 2019 is felt because it's they are unable to quickly pivot to change pricing downward, which honestly changing pricing when demand is falling doesn't necessarily help uh, the organization recover what it needs to. It, it can be the exact opposite strategy that can lead to a snowball effect on the revenue side. And then on the cost side, they aren't able to decrease costs because the costs were spent 10 months ago for what's put into an airplane today that hasn't even been delivered and was ordered two years ago and is going to be delivered next year. So because of the long timelines of the business, they also have a big problem on the variable cost side of the business. What should Boeing do? Well, knowing that in this year with COVID-19 and the sharp decline in passenger travel and the likely lack of recovery in the travel segment in 2020 or even potentially 2021, it's likely that Boeing is going to see sustained headwinds in the business. So as a variable cost business, what can they do? Well, they don't have a lot of choices because they have such a long runway. Um, Boeing probably shouldn't be focusing on decreasing the cost of their planes. It's probably not the right time to strip out costs from the system to think about changing suppliers. Uh, it's probably important for them to have trust in their suppliers and in the security of how they operate. Rate. But anything that is a non-essential part, that would absolutely be a key focus on the sourcing side of the business. Um, in addition, on the uh, sales side of the business, Boeing really needs to focus on clients that are going to be sustaining growth in the next year and in maintaining price when they sell to those clients. If they, like I mentioned, have this decrease in volume and a decrease in buy price, that's a double whammy or a snowball effect, and it's not necessarily effective. In addition, Boeing is a legacy company that is built off of long lasting relationships with a fairly small number of clients. And so decreasing price now might lead to an overall price decrease in the future, which would lead to not just a shock in the business, but a bigger problem over time. As we can see here, this Boeing company, 50, uh, page 56, uh, gives us a lot of information about where the net loss and the earnings come from. You can see that Boeing actually was significantly profitable in 27 and 2018. Uh, they used their assets and they used their capital really wisely. They had significant profits off of their revenues. Over 10% net profits is a really good uh, profit amount, but their loss in 2019 ended up being about 636 million, which honestly, with the sustained history they have, isn't too significant, but it's something that they're gonna have to manage toward in the future. Overall, I think Boeing is gonna be fine. It's a business that is in a duopoly in large part between Boeing and Airbus. Um, organizations don't have a big interest in having Boeing go out of business. That gives Airbus much more pricing power when it comes to these kinds of businesses. Um, they have these other lines of business, defense and global services to prop up the business in the meantime. Um, so I think that Boeing's major long-term focus needs to be getting back running on the ground and keeping its price point sustained. We hope that you enjoyed this analysis of Boeing and we hope that you take a look at their financial statements to get a better insight into where Boeing is and how they're doing as a company. And we look forward to having you join us for future episodes of Strategy Simplified.